Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to be going through a couple more news stories in the world of tech and gaming. First, we're going to be talking about Nvidia, which has now made it official that they are going to be supporting ray tracing on previous generation Pascal cards from the GTX 1060 and upwards. So I wanted to go over the details of that when we can expect to see it and also my thoughts and opinions on it as I usually like to do with these types of things. And also Gabe Newell has made a comment on the future of the Half-Life series, which basically makes it look like we might be seeing one in just a few years time. Today's video is brought to you by levelgo.com where you could pick up all of your favorite games coming out in the year 2019, as well as software like Windows 10 Pro for just $16, Microsoft Office 2016 for under 40, and Office 2019 Professional Plus for just $80. And if you head over there with the links down in the description below, you can get 12% off of Windows 10 with the code JKL12 at checkout or 10% off the entire website with the code JKL10. Just hit up the links down in the description below for more info and be sure to use those coupon codes. But starting off, let's talk about NVIDIA with their announcement at GTC 2019 to support NVIDIA ray tracing and DXR features on previous generation cards, specifically Pascal. So this isn't going to go back like every single generation of graphics card ever. This is going to start at the 1060 and upwards. So any of the 10 series cards, 1060, 1070, 1080, 1080 Ti, Titan XP, Titan X Little P, uh, the, and also the new touring cards as well, the 1660 Ti and 1660, and conceivably the 1650 as well, which uh, looks like that could be coming in very soon as well with just four gigabytes of video memory. Interestingly, on the list of cards that were supported, it didn't list the 1060 three gigabytes, so I'm not sure if that was maybe just a, a misprint, maybe they forgot to list it there, um, or they are segmenting it specifically at the six gigabyte 1060. Actually, that's very likely the case is that's the only card they listed the video memory account for, so it's probably not a typo now in hindsight looking at that. So, never mind, let's move on. Um, now, I can't help but feel that this was, you know, kind of coming on the heels of the announcement we saw the other day where we talked about AMD having ray tracing support specifically on the most latest version of CryEngine with that demo that was shown by Crytek, the Neon Noir demo, which looked absolutely amazing. Super exciting stuff to be able to see that stuff coming over to AMD, at least in one specific game where the engine is supporting it. But in the situation with NVIDIA, it's a little bit different where this isn't just one specific game engine saying we're adding in this type of ray tracing to, you know, it'll support any card. Um, this is, you know, games that are already out with ray tracing support and conceivably any game that has ray tracing, it will work on these cards. So Battlefield 1 and Metro Exodus are really the only games that come to mind because, well, they're the only games that have actual ray tracing support at this time, although we are expected to see DXR features brought into Shadow of the Tomb Raider at some point. I mean, that game came out, like, what, last September or October, and we're still waiting for them here in March. We still don't have any DXR update, while Battlefield had them all the way back in November, and Metro Exodus had them at launch, so not really sure what Crystal Dynamics is doing and what they're waiting for to roll out support on the Shadow of the Tomb Raider to get DXR features into that game, but I guess maybe we'll see it at some point, maybe before Half-Life 5, three, four, any of the new Half-Lives possibly, that's the next story. Now, of course, the big questions on our mind now with the ray tracing is when are we going to get it? And the answer to that is April. There's going to be a simple driver update in April. And if you are running one of these supported graphics cards, then you'll be able to download that driver and take advantage of it. And you'll probably need to be on the latest Windows update as well. Probably um, the one that came out last November, the fall update added in ray tracing support. So as long as you're on that and the April driver that NVIDIA releases for this, you'll be able to support it. And then the other big question obviously is going to be performance. If we take a look at this graph here, you can see they're showing the GTX 1080 Ti, which is a Pascal card, comparing that to the RTX 2080, where the RTX 2080, they say, has 3x performance, but it's important to note that's what the RT cores and with DLSS enabled with the 1080 Ti will not support. The 1080 Ti will not be able to support DLSS because that's run only on tensor cores and then the RTX 2080 with the RT core would get it looks like in the realm of about maybe double the 1080 Ti is looking like it's about sub 20 FPS so pretty abysmal and this one's looking at it's maybe around like 50 FPS so it's like like maybe like 2.5x 
um, performance running with the RT core on the RTX 2080, which the tw which the 1080 Ti will not be able to use. And this was 1440p ultra ray tracing and everything. So it's more than likely not going to run very well in that particular instance. You'll almost certainly have to use ray tracing on low, even with a high-end Pascal GPU like the 1080 Ti or either of the Titan X variants for that generation. But it is important to note that there also might be some differences with how ray tracing is used on these cards. So on that graph, it listed Ultra RT was being used. However, on the list of the GPUs that are being used, you can see that it's segmented here where the Touring cards have complex RT effects, multiple RT effects, and a higher ray tracing count. Whereas on the Pascal and Touring cards, that are not part of the RTX cards, obviously for the touring ones, it said it's going to have basic RT effects and a low ray tracing count. So the type, the amount of objects and the, the, the level of ray tracing that's being used on these cards might be vastly different than what we're seeing on something like even the RTX 2080 in this head to head comparison that they're showing on the Metro Exodus graph. So it's really anyone's best guess. It might end up running better if it's using low, low effect ray tracing. So that's something we're just gonna have to wait and see. Nvidia did comment on performance and they said that game performance will vary based on the ray traced effects and the number of rays cast in the game, along with GPU model and game resolution, which would make a lot of sense because this is going to be running on the basic shader since it doesn't have RT cores. It's going to be using regular shaders and it's obviously going to scale with, you know, which segmented card you got. If you got a 1060, it's going to worse, run worse than a 1080 Ti and so on and so forth. Last and certainly not least, heading over to DSOG, Gabe Newell hinted that we might see a new Half-Life game in the next four to five years, or at least a Half-Life game. He didn't say exactly if it's going to be a new one. Um, he, you know, he didn't really say a whole lot, to be honest, but at least gives us a little bit of hope when a fan reached out to him and asked when he would, when we could possibly see another Half-Life game. And he, the Gabe Newell responded by simply saying, quote-unquote, just don't die in the next five years or so. So that's basically all we got from Gabe Newell. So it would sound like we're going to see a new Half-Life game in the next four to five years, which I think is better than not having a timeline at all, which is what we've been going on for the last however many years, waiting for a sequel to one of these games. And it could also maybe not even be a sequel, as DSOG goes on to explain. It could also be a spin-off series, which I would be absolutely fine as well. I, I don't really need to see... The story of Gordon Freeman continued along. I know there are a lot of people that disagree with me on that. They want to see how the story wraps up. Um, but personally, I just always enjoyed those games for the experience and the gameplay. I never really got into the lore all that much with the Half-Life games. I know I'm probably different than most hardcore Half-Life fans out there who love the story and the narrative. Um, I just always enjoyed the gameplay elements, the physics-based stuff that was kind of revolutionary for its time and doing things that other games weren't doing. Uh, so that's kind of what I enjoyed it for, and how much of that is just nostalgia goggles. Uh, I really won't know until a new, a new Half-Life game comes out and see if I like that just as much as I enjoyed all the old ones, which were some of my favorite single-player games of all time. Gabe was also asked recently what kind of games he was playing recently, where he listed a few games like Dota, Cultist Simulator, Automation BMNG, which is a racing sort of game, Resident Evil 2 Remake, and also an unannounced Valve game, which could also very likely be this new Half-Life game. It could also be an unannounced brand new IP. It could be Portal 3. It could be any number of games. Team Fortress 3, who knows? Valve isn't very good at counting the three. That's the meme, and it's true. Show me one time where they've ever counted the three. Maybe we'll see a Dota 3. I don't know. I just want a new Half-Life game. I would also settle for a new Portal game. I love the Portal games almost as much or as equally to the Half-Life games. Again, I know I'm a little bit of an outsider with that opinion, but I thought the Portal game, specific, and especially Portal 2, was absolutely fantastic. And that game still has legs to this day with the user-created content. You could still load up Portal 2, and if you haven't touched it in a long time, you will find literally thousands, almost unlimited number of levels that you can download for free that have been created by the community and have puzzles that were as good or even well better than what was even put into the game by Valve. And then when you added in the good narrative that Portal 2 had with the characters like Wheatley played by the legendary Steven Merchant and all that, um, yeah, Portal 2 was a fucking amazing game, and I would love to see a Portal 3 game come out as well. But fingers crossed for a new Half-Life game in just a few years. But yeah, let's discuss down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this. NVIDIA adding in ray tracing support and things of the like. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and probably cane some more Division 2. It's my recent addiction. Talked about that in yesterday's video already. Not going to go into it today. 
just really like it, and I found out that there's a bunch of hidden masks in it, and also a bunch of hidden chests, and I want to go get all the chests and the masks, because I just want more stuff to do in that game, because it's an absolute blasty blast. So, I'm going to get out of here, and go do all that after I edit this video, because I guess I have to, it's my job. Otherwise, you won't see it, and I'd be talking to no one, and I'd be crazy if I was doing that, wouldn't I? Yeah. So, I'll see you tomorrow for another video if I'm not too busy playing The Division 2. Ta-da! Not Turok, Dinosaur Hunter. Ta-ra! Google it! It's an English, Northern English, Welsh thing. You say goodbye. It's what ta means. Peace! From all of my Americans. <laughs>